Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. My name is Semino Asrat. I'm a PhD student at La Sapienza University of Rome in Italy. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the uh, paleoecology of modern humans using carbon and oxygen in amyl isotope. This is part of my PhD project that involves also mobility uh, using strontium. But for the moment, I'm going to be talking about the carbon and oxygen preliminary results of the fauna samples that I have analyzed so far. Um, <clears throat> so you might have heard uh, uh, Professor Julia Luthor had been mentioning about uh, East African scientists. Uh, there are really uh, old uh, scientists that dated back all the way to about 6 million years ago, um, particularly from Ethiopia and Kenya. Um, there are lots and lots of environmental studies focused on, on the early uh, home units, uh, but late Pleistocene and middle uh, to late Pleistocene scientists are also very critical in East Africa up until recently. The emergence of modern uh, humans were came from uh, uh, Ethiopia, and uh, uh, there are a lot of other scientists that date back to the late Pleistocene. Uh, so the late Pleistocene is very critical. There are archaeologically the site is very documented and uh, environmentally based on global um, environmental record. We have uh, it has been indicated that there are diverse environmental. Uh, and climatic fluctuation technologically, even the, even though the technological sequences attributed to the MSA uh, uh, artifacts, uh, regionally and locally, there have been diverse uh, uh, materials. Um, uh, particularly from the last 50 to 30,000 years ago, uh, there is emergence of more behavioral modernity in East Africa and, and uh, particularly in South Africa and the rest of Africa. And technologically, changes have also been uh, documented between uh, from the Mese to the later storage. So this is a very critical time period. Uh, however, Environment, uh, the environment of most MSA scientists, particularly from Ethiopia, have not been documented. This is partly because the fauna preservation of MSA scientists are not very good in, 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 in Ethiopia. And so far, the environment data that we have so far came from ocean courts, lake courts, and pollen records. Um, so why do we care about the environment? Because there are lots and lots of theory that 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 uh, implies environment plays a crucial role as a driving force for human behavioral and technological development and so these theories in in like i said before have been tested have been tested for the earlier hominids but for the late uh, periods like late Pleistocene, marine isotope stage four three time periods are poorly documented um, so my study area is in Gotera. Gotera is um, a site situated in southern Ethiopia, not far from uh, uh, Kenya, uh, and as a uh, many building sites, Kubifora and Turkana Basin, Omo area. It's just uh, some like 25 kilometers uh, to the north of Jawahar area and 500 kilometers to the south of the capital Addis Ababa. Uh, it is situated inside the broadly bifurcated rift zone of uh, uh, the East African rift system and the sedimentation is fully lacustrine. The site is currently dated back to 43 to 45,000 years ago, but um, so archaeological exploration started in the 1970s by French archaeologists. Uh, between 1974 to the 1976, there is uh, materials were collected and stored in the National Museum of Ethiopia. But up until recently, the site was not properly documented. It's only since 2016 that an archaeologist, including my professor, um, and just been a college, uh, from the Sapienza University of Rome in Italy, uh, went explored the area and documented the site and came up uh, uh, and with uh, materials and uh, 
Ex excavation, proper excavation started in 2018, um, uh, between 2018 to 2022. Uh, we have collected lithic artifacts and we have also evidence of fireplaces, faunal uh, materials. Uh, behaviorally, the lithic artifacts are attributed to the MSA materials and uh, some of these materials are burned. Uh, and the materials are made up of quartz, basalt, and Levalo technology. And there is uh, there are also fauna, lots of fauna. Uh, most of the fauna are fragmentary and indeterminable, except the teeth. So the objective of my overall research is to have an understanding about the habitat ecological nature and what was the environment look like during uh, this critical time period and the precipitation seasonality, as well as the mobility patterns, if, if the seasonality affects the mobility of the, the, the uh, fauna. But for today, my focus will be on the environment and climate. Uh, you have already noticed the carbon isotope is um, uh, to understand the vegetation structure and by uh, identifying C3 and C4 photosynthesis files, we have if the area is grassland, if it is wooded or forested, and carbon oxygen isotope, uh, it can help us to have an understanding about precipitation, aridity, and humidity uh, of the area. So we conducted excavation and documented materials. Uh, in the laboratory, we identified uh, the taxa of different mammalian species, different herbivores, mostly the bovid species, bovid family. We have had predominantly the Alcella pini, uh, topi, and um, uh, hartebees. We have sweet. Uh, we also uh, got some uh, uh, materials of giraffe, and we have uh, small carnivores. Uh, most dominantly um, rodentes and micro mammals. We have antelope, antelopes, different antelopes of um, uh, gazelle, grand gazelle, and Thompson gazelle. So in the laboratory, I doc I um, collected both bulk and sequential samples, sequential samples to understand if there is a seasonality during that time period and bulk samples. Uh, to have a, an average and uh, 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 environmental condition of during the to the, the mineralization period. Uh, in the laboratory, we uh, pretreatment, uh, chemical pretreatment and analysis. Um, we have the result. That this is the, for the moment the result of the carbon and oxygen isotope of about 20 something, 20 plus uh, uh, others seven sequentially sampled uh, uh, mammalian fauna. They are sweet and cellophane bovid, generally indeterminable bovids. As you can see from this graph, um, <clears throat> the carbon isotope is mostly ranges between zero to three per mil, and there are not lots of uh, uh, variation in the carbon isotope. And similarly, in the oxygen isotope, it looks like a little bit varied, but not that much uh, var variations in both in the carbon and oxygen isotopes. So there is more enrichment of in the carbon isotope, more positive values, which is predominantly C4 grasses. And we have some, um, some faunas that have a uh, uh, character of mixed C3 and C4 uh, feeding character uh, behavior. And this is Tragelafini. Tragelafini, this is the one that we have uh, an outlier in terms of carbon isotope value. And Tragelafus is a species that mostly a browser. Uh, so there might be a little bit of um, the wooded, probably wooded environment, and uh, we are going to check if this is uh, from the local origin or if it is uh, brought from another area, a little bit far from area, because I'm also analyzing the strontium isotopic composition of uh, these individuals. So 
Predominantly, we have grazers from the isotopic values and a little bit of mixed feeders, but the sample is limited. And so uh, more samples are being currently analyzed about um, uh, about 150 samples now. I just came from the laboratory in Ethiopia and are currently being analyzed in, in the RMS. Um, in terms of oxygen isotope, we did, uh, uh, we have some obligate and non obligate drinkers and do a comparative analysis between obligate and non obligate drinkers. Uh, I didn't do um, any statistical analysis, but as you can see from, from this graph, there is a significant, really significant variation between obligate drinkers and non obligate drinkers. And some of th these species are evaporation sensitive and the non obligate drinkers have a really high uh, oxygen isotope value and which may be sensitive for evaporation and evaporation would have been greater than uh, precipitation and that could be a water stress environment or aridity. Um, and I also conducted a sequential sampling and um, uh, oxygen and carbon level isotope analysis. And as you can see from all the three of these graphs, there is uh, variations between samples, uh, intratus samples for the tragelafini and bosalcelafini uh, species here. Um, so clearly this shows that there is a seasonality. And if there is a seasonal moment, again, um, we are going to, we are waiting for the data from the strontium and check this can go in, in line with the uh, strontium data. So in general, the Gutara materials that we have analyzed so far shows that a more open environment than predominantly C4 uh, conception, uh, a little bit of uh, a uh, mixed environment from Tragelaphus and as, as, as a few species that we expected to have in the, uh, in the picture may show presence of a little bit of percentage of wooded vegetation. Um, so the environment generally look like some arid environment and semi arid uh, environment and climatic condition, like uh, probably more or less look like the modern uh, southern Ethiopia, like. Um, the Turkana area. And the Teratus profile of Bobby specimen shows seasonal variabilities uh, uh, of dietary behaviors. So in the future, I am analyzing more data and the species are also variable. More species are added, fortunately, and this is uh, interesting. Uh, I have also planned to do a comparative analysis with other MAC sites in, in Ethiopia. In general, some of these sites are highland sites out of the rift system. Some of the sites are cave and rock shelter sites. So this, I am planning to have a diachronic understanding in terms of um, spatial variabilities uh, and similarities of environmental conditions in 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 eastern africa in general thank you so much